Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Brittany. I know I'm really pushing it with this year's Halloween themed video. Sorry about that. <laughs> I've been super busy editing and putting out my 1989 album project, but I still wanted to give you guys some fun Halloween chocolate bonbon design. So here it is. In today's video, I'll show you how to create a gold sparkly half moon using a piping tip to decorate your chocolate mold. This design is fun anytime, but I think it's especially fun for a kind of spooky Halloween design. So let's get into it. Here are the supplies that you'll need. Edible gold luster dust. I have a video where I test out the best edible gold luster dusts. Check it out in this card if you haven't seen it. And I will link a handful of my favorites in the description. But today I'm going with the Amare Gachon Sweet Shop Gold because it is a pretty champagne color and I think that it will be a really nice color for a moon. Plus it's a more glittery gold which will look great on a chocolate. Some plain cocoa butter. I'm using Noel cocoa butter buttons. A background cocoa butter color. I think anything dark would look great like deep navy, burgundy, or black, but today I'm going with a super dark purple. I'll be using Pastry Chef's Boutique Purple Plum. A half moon shaped large piping tip. This one is from Amazon and of course I'll link it down in the description box. If you want to make your own, you totally can by using a large round tip and cutting out a slightly smaller circle out of the cardboard and just taping it off to look just like this. A half sphere polycarbonate chocolate mold. Today I'm using Grayus CM3262. To make this design, you will need an airbrush setup. I go over my whole airbrush in major detail in a video, so check that out if you have questions. And I'm using a Grex Tritium airbrush. When using an airbrush, it is also really great to have a dedicated spray booth plus a mask for protection. I'll link these below as well. Of course, you'll need to pick your favorite chocolate and filling. Today, I won't be filling these, but I will be using dark chocolate for the shell to give the purple a nice dark background. And then, of course, all the obvious chocolate work supplies that you normally use, like scrapers, spatulas, containers, paper towels, parchment paper, cotton balls, a heat gun, a stick blender, etc. Of course, the first thing you want to always do is make sure that your mold is clean and shiny. I just quickly take some cotton balls and polish the inside of each cavity. Next, I temper some cocoa butter. This is pure cocoa butter, no coloring added. If you don't yet know how to temper cocoa butter, I will link a tutorial for that. The process for making metallic cocoa butter is essentially the same as adding powdered colors. So I'll first warm it up to the top temperature between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. Then I just add in my edible gold luster dust. Sorry, I didn't measure how much cocoa butter I used or how much luster dust. I just eyeballed both. <laughs> but for this much cocoa butter, I actually ended up using four heaping mini spoonfuls of luster. And I ended up finishing off the whole container. <laughs> the more luster dust, the denser the glitter on the moon will be. So keep that in mind. Now I let my gold cocoa butter cool down to 27 degrees Celsius. And then I warm it back up. And when I'm using the airbrush, I like to work with the cocoa butter at around 31 degrees Celsius. I've already warmed up my airbrush and tested the airflow, so now I just pour my gold into the top cup. Okay, so this process actually took me some trial and error to learn and get good results with. So if you try this, don't get discouraged. It will possibly take you a couple tries to get it right. What you're essentially doing is just using the tip as a stencil and spraying the cocoa butter through it and into the mold. And if you don't get your settings right, you can either get too light of a coat and the moon won't be as visible, or you can get too much cocoa butter and it can drip and the moon will run. So I have my compressor at 80 PSI, but I have my airflow setting between low and medium. So on this specific airbrush setup, I spun the airflow dial like twice around about, I'd say. And then my paint flow is on low. And for me, that means it's like an eighth of an inch open, like I showed you in my other video. And then as for the nozzles, I am using my small attachment, the one that you can put the round nozzle on, but I took the round magnetic nozzle off. So I'm using no nozzle. Now, at first when I sprayed, I was kind of like pumping it so that I wouldn't get too much 
cocoa butter coming out, which kind of worked. But then I actually found that with these settings, I just sprayed in a round motion back and forth and it worked well. And I like to hold the moon shape at the top of the cavity because the piping tip will start to collect extra cocoa butter inside and when it does, it will run down to the bottom. So if the moon is at the top, then it won't drip out into the mold. And because of that collection of cocoa butter inside the tip, you'll need to just take a piece of paper towel every so often and clean it out. I think I could only get away with spraying two or three cavities at most before cleaning the tip. After I got all the moon sprayed, I wanted to add some uneven speckles of gold as well. They are cute and they kind of look like stars. To do that, I just used a toothbrush and flicked some gold into the cavities. And then always be sure to clean off the surface of your mold using a paper towel. And here's what the gold moons look like. At first you may think the gold isn't dense or opaque enough, but as you can see here, once you put a dark background behind it, they really pop. Now I just take my tempered purple cocoa butter and I use my large plastic cup on my airbrush. My settings for the background spray are 80 PSI, medium to max airflow, medium paint flow, and I'm using my 0.7 millimeter fan nozzle adjusted to horizontal. As I spray, I rotate the mold each direction to make sure I get each curve inside the bonbon with an even coat. In between coats, it's nice to clean your mold off with a scraper and save that valuable cocoa butter. I just scrape it right back into the container. Now I wanna do a quick little lesson on colored cocoa butters. If the pre-colored cocoa butter does not contain titanium dioxide, which is white food coloring, they will be somewhat translucent. This color I'm using today doesn't contain white. The colors I buy a lot from Chef Rubber do contain white, which means as long as I get a thick enough coat, I don't have to worry about what kind of chocolate I mold the design in because the white blocks out the background. With this particular purple, I know that as soon as I back it with dark chocolate, it's going to darken the purple a lot, which is fine with me because I actually want it to be nearly black with just a hint of purple. If you wanted it to be truly purple, you could mold the bonbons in white chocolate, or you could do a coat of white cocoa butter behind it. Here's the mold with the white countertop behind it to give you an idea of what they would look like molded in white. So next I temper my dark chocolate. I have multiple tempering videos if you need to watch those for more information. But here I am just using a polypropylene microwave safe bowl and I'm using the seeding method. And most of you probably know the drill. I'm filling each cavity at 32 degrees Celsius, shaking out the bubbles, tapping out the excess, then scraping the mold clean. I like to let the shell set up at room temperature for 10 to 20 minutes. And I'm not filling these, so I popped them into the fridge for 20 minutes to contract. As you can see, I covered the mold with plastic and that's to protect the chocolate from moisture in the fridge. And now I tap out my shell so we can see the results. And <laughs> this is a perfect time for a funny little lesson because if you look at the chocolates, you can clearly see they look cloudy, which means they've contracted from the mold, but yet they're not coming out. <laughs> and that's because of static. <laughs> so I just rotate each shell out one by one instead. <laughs> And here's the final design. And with colors this dark and with sparkly luster dust, it's also nice to take the bonbons outside in natural or direct sunlight to see more details.
All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you learned something new. If you liked the video, please like it down below and leave me a comment. It helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's spooky and sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.